the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably live with. I'm going to say that again for all of you. Sounds really simplistic, but it's pretty profound in terms of when you understand what it really means. The quality of our lives is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty we can comfortably live with. See, if you have to be certain about everything every moment, you can't do squat. And if you're going to be alive, you got to grow, and you can't grow unless you're facing things where there's uncertainty. Like, if you know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, day after day, moment after moment, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you know what they're going to say, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. In the beginning, you might like that, but after a while, you're going to be bored shitless, right? We need to feel alive. In order to grow, we've got to get in a different world. I always tell people, it's where uncertainty is the thing you need to balance. Now, think about it. There's a word, there's a four-letter word that all over the world we're responding to differently than any time I can remember in my 60 years of living, and that word is risk. R-I-S-K, those four little words. People today, they're afraid to walk outside and breathe near somebody. I was outside here in Florida, and Florida, we have a lot of freedom here compared to the rest of the United States, and we have half as many COVID deaths, by the way, as we we're supposed to be number one in the country because we have the most older people population. Half as many as you have in New York. And we have freedom and we've been open forever. But I went on the, on the beach the other day, right in front of my house, and there's nobody on the beach. You have this huge beach. There's one man in the distance. And I watched him come up, and this poor man, I felt so bad for him. He's running and he's bent over. He needs a gospel. He needs everything we teach. And he's wearing a mask and there's no human for a mile. And he's so crunched over and he can't get enough air. And what is he? He's living in fear. He's been conditioned. What kind of risk does he have running on the beach by himself? The risk is I'm not getting enough air. Your immune system's suppressed by that. So we live in a world, I mean, think about this country, America wouldn't exist unless people want to risk their lives to get here. We wouldn't have freedom except for the people who went out and risked and gave their lives for us. Listen, 1.2 million people die every single year in car accidents. Every single year, 3,300 people a day. So how do you leave your house? That's more people that are dying, certainly, of COVID. How do you leave your house? How do you drive your car? Because you know that if you don't take any risk, you have no life. You need to take intelligent risks, not be stupid. But think about it. Every day of your life, you're driving down the street, and there's someone coming at you, maybe 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, and there's nothing but a yellow line dividing you from that person. How the hell do you leave your house? Faith. It is the F word that every religion seems to agree upon. They might argue about the name of God. They might argue about a lot of things. But they all know the power of faith. And you know something about faith, guys? You don't have to be taught to have faith. You were born with it or you couldn't survive. You just have to use that muscle. And if you don't use it, like, why do you get in your car and drive? Do people every day cross that yellow line and kill people because they're drunk? Because they fall asleep at the wheel? Because they're texting? You bet. Every single day it happens all over the earth. In every city virtually in the world, someone's dying driving a car. But we don't not drive our cars. Because otherwise you have to stay home and do nothing the rest of your life. So I say to all of you, grab your courage. Courage does not mean you're not afraid. We've said this several times. It means you're scared shitless, but you're going to do it anyway. And if you're going to make any money, if you're going to build a business, if you're going to have a great relationship, you're going to have to take some risks. Intelligent risks, not stupid. I'm not saying break laws or rules or whatever the case may be where you live. I mean, comply with the rules, but don't live in fear. And don't let your uncertainty keep you from taking action okay how many agree that if your emotion is high you can deal with stuff a hell of a lot better say i how many agree in a relationship is a hell of a lot better when you're high say i good then let's see how to go from high to low and how you do it because the illusion is something makes us feel a certain way but the truth of the matter is you could say they said this and it pissed me off well, somebody else could have said it and it doesn't piss you off. So all it is is a belief about how to respond. But the emotion itself, you trigger. Even good emotions. If like you kiss somebody and wham, Mr. Happy comes to full attention, you're so excited. Where does that feeling come from? Does it come from wet tissue touching wet tissue? You no, know, if that was true, kissing your dog would excite you. It's because you have a belief in your head that someone who's shaped like this, someone who shares the same spiritual values as you, somebody who kisses me like this, wham, I feel like this. But if they're not spiritual like me, or if they're shaped like this, or they kiss like this, you go like this. 
It's a belief system. Emotions at their rawest form are always available. And we do emotions, they don't happen to us. And that's the lesson we want to get in our bodies and we can teach our clients. Here's what I want you to see. Emotion is created by motion. Emotion comes the way you move. If I said to you there was a depressed person behind curtain number one over here, and for a $100,000 donation to your favorite charity, if you could describe their physical body without even seeing them, I know you could do it. Tell me, what's their posture like? Quick. Nice and loud. What is it? Where's their head? Where are their eyes? Breathing full or shallow? Uh, muscles in their face, up and tight or slack? Now how come, whatever, 2,000 of you all agree? Because you've practiced this crap before, haven't you? Now if you take somebody like that and you change their physical body, as what science shows today, you just radically change their physical body, you change their biochemistry like that. It's not a fake thing like hiding your emotion or pretending to be happy. A radical change in the body produces a radical change in emotion. So let's do a subtle little test for this. I want you to shake your body out. And here's what I want you to do. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to approach five or six people as quick as you can in the next minute or two and introduce yourself to people. But when you introduce yourself to them, I want you to do it in a very specific way, in a very specific state of mind. I want you to greet people as if you feel like meeting them is a total waste of your time. Like they're scum, why do you have to meet them? So it might look something like this. You, sir, come here. Come here. What's your name? What? Frank? Bill, get out of here. Okay, now, as therapists, I know this will be very difficult. Many of you go, I can't be me. <laughs> but what I want you to do is deliberately put yourself in a state where it's a way, who here has ever been pissed off or frustrated? Raise your hand and say, I. I want you to deliberately get in this frustrated state, like it's a waste of your time. And the reason I want you to do this is I want you to notice not only how somebody greets you and how it feels, that's obvious. I want you to notice what do you have to do with your body to go, if you really do this legitimately, when you put yourself in a state where it's a waste of your time, it's frustrating, you're a little pissed off, what do you got to do with the muscles in your face to get in that state of mind? What happens to your breathing to get in that state of mind? How do you have to change it? How do you move? What gets tense in your body? Do you go straight towards them or do you hesitate? Do you talk loud or more quiet, fast or slow? I want you to notice the physical things you have to do to go in the state. Now, if you don't do this, like if you just do it kind of half-reared, then it'll be like, why are we doing this stupid exercise? Be like a kid, not like a boring adult. So stay in state, notice what you do, total waste your time, you got one minute, go. Meet as many people as you can, go. And so if we want to change our lives, we really want to make things work. Make sure I remember this, write in your note. It's not the event, it's what we do with it that determines the quality of your life. It's not the event, it's what you do with it that determines the quality of your life. What we do with it is what we do with it inside of our head. It's not the event. It's what we do with the event that determines the quality of our life. What do we do with it inside of our head? We can take things that destroy other people and cause them to make us better. Remember, the meaning you associate or assign to something, the meaning you associate, right, print parentheses, or assign to something, determines how you feel and what you do. So the meaning you associate or that you assign to something determines how you feel and what you do throughout your life. Determines how you feel and what you do throughout your life. Bless you. The problem is, are you communicating to yourself in a way that's empowering or disempowering? And what would you say a good deal of time it is, probably, if you're not totally happy? Disempowering. So the problem is not the event. The problem is the meaning that you're associating to things that's affecting your actions throughout your whole life, determining your destiny, is probably disempowering a good deal of the time. If you're not happy, if you're happy, you're probably assigning a lot of empowering meanings, aren't you? You've come up with some core beliefs and ways of looking at the world that really help you. Help you to evaluate things in a way where you're really in charge, or you're not in reaction. So if we want to really take control then, we got to remember what I've already said. Nothing in life has any meaning except the meaning that we give it. So for...
doctor staff. The doctor raises his voice, says, please give me this. Well, maybe he doesn't say please, he says, give me this. He doesn't say the word please. What does that mean? Scumbag doctor, that's what it means. It means he doesn't respect you, right? It means he doesn't care about you, right? Isn't that what it means? If you're upset, that's what the meaning you've attached to it is. The universe doesn't look in terms of good and bad, right, wrong, success, failure. It looks in terms of cause and effect. Every cause creates an effect and every effect has a cause. And if you participate in the cause, you participate in the effect. And I don't say will participate in it, you participate in it. They happen together. Your experience of the effect may take some time, it may take a few days, it may take a month, it may happen immediately. This is water. To a fish, water is so ubiquitous it ceases to exist. Now we all have that same thing and it's playing on us and it's keeping us from becoming who we want to become. And that thing is our mindset, it's our belief system, it is so ever present. data you don't even notice it you don't even know that it's real and this is the thing that impacts your life it is your inability to see that your mindset controls everything that it is water in and of itself now when I heard this from Shakespeare I realized that once you become aware of the water you can change everything that you can go from a scared lost kid to whomever you want to be On the one hand, the meaning of life is propagation of your selfish genes. On the other hand, I would say you make your own meaning, uh, and we and we all do that. And we lead, again lead a better life if we have if we develop something important. Somebody else writes music, plays the music. There are all sorts of ways you can give meaning to your life, your personal relationships, your, your love for your spouse. These these all give meaning. To to be who you are every day of your life. Never care about anybody who gets in your way that says you're not doing something the proper way. Because what happens is this, you start to create a whole bunch of people that aren't even yourself. You, you never figure out who you are. You, you never live up to your dreams, your ambition. You, you live up to what whoever is around you that you like so much that you want to emulate and be like so much, you live their dreams. You lose your power. The ultimate power is owning yourself. I just said I refuse to be a victim to these circumstances. So a victim 
consciousness is when we allow something in our outer environment to control the way we feel and think. Something in my outer environment, some person or some condition is controlling the way I think and feel. And that's not the truth. That's just a response, right? So anything that controls our thoughts and feelings causes us to be victims of those things.